Hey guys, my name's Ian. We're Discotech, essentially open table for nightlife. The US nightlife market is an $8 billion industry that's long overdue for technological disruption. Today, customers still need to go through traditional nightclub promoters, human middlemen, to get information, make reservations, and make transactions at nightlife venues. This process is inefficient and non-transparent. Discotech is doing to these 30,000 plus nightlife promoters what companies like Priceline and Kayak did to travel agents. So what's the problem? Why Discotech? On the left-hand side, we take a, tip, a look at a traditional customer experience. Customers still need to call, text promoters, go back and forth, and it's just too much friction for a customer to, to tr try to go out. On the right-hand side, we take a look at some of the pain points from the venue's perspective. They're managing dozens, if not hundreds, of different promoters. They're hard to manage, difficult to scale, and the venue isn't getting any data analytics back. Discotech changes that experience. We're the app for millennials. So we make it very easy for customers to get information all in one place. We make it very transparent what prices are, what you're getting for the table or ticket, and then ultimately, it's easy. You can make reservations, get confirmation, get receipts directly from the, the phone, and we handle transactions directly. To date, we've partnered with over 130 different nightlife venues across cities like LA, Las Vegas, Miami, San Francisco, and our partners include seven of the top 10 biggest venues in the country by revenue. So, so like Excess, Marquee, some of these guys do over $100 million of revenue each. So how do we make money? On the far right, we take a look at uh, it's the guest list, we make three to five dollars commission per transaction there. On ticketing, we make between a 15 and 20 percent service fee. And on table bookings, we make between 10 and 20 percent commission on the revenue booked. Uh, to the venue, it's risk free to work with us. We only eat what we kill, and that's what makes it really easy for us to sign on these venues. Uh, monthly bookings to date, so this is our gross merchandise volume. We just had our best month in September, did a little over 340,000 in monthly uh, GMV. On this slide, the green line is essentially our gross profit. We just broke over 40,000 a month last month. And the blue line is actually our monthly marketing spend. That, we cut that uh, as we were starting to get a little lean on cash. I love this slide. It shows how on a monthly basis we acquire downloads. So in the past, we were doing a lot of paid marketing, um, Facebook mobile ads, Google AdWords. But then when we added guest list and ticketing, we started to see our product take off organically because we started to solve a problem and made our app really useful to your average nightlife user. Uh, our vision is to be the lifestyle app for nightlife. So we started with nightclubs because they needed the work, but we've since added music festivals to our app, upscale bars, lounges, and this makes our addressable market size uh, $25 billion in the United States. Uh, we have some great investors. Um, a lot from LA, some of, some of you guys are here today. And the team, uh, founded by three guys from UC Berkeley, we're all from the class of 2008, uh, met freshman year dorm, uh, unit three. Uh, great experience. We've lived together, worked together for the last three years. We've been in, I think, three different cities and five different houses, and yeah, we've hustled a long way to get to where we are today. So that concludes my presentation. Thanks for your time, and I'll open up the floor to questions. Good job. <laughs> Love this All right, Ian. Thank you. Which judge wants to go first? Well, so the average person that goes out through your application, what's their frequency of use in a one-month period? Yeah, so we actually segment our users differently based on you know, whether they're a guest list customer, where we'll see a lot more guest list users because it's cheap or free. On the table side, that's much more sporadic. Sometimes people do go once a year, maybe once in a lifetime, and then you have your power users. Our average transaction side on the tables is about $1,600. So it is a, it, it's a large spend, but fewer in frequency. But like, are they typically using your app to book more than once a month? I'm not talking about the volume, of like, like the total quantity, but like the frequency. Yeah, so on the guest list side, a lot of our guest list users will book multiple guest lists in a month because it's just so easy. It's free admission. Got it. And that's a, that's the, that makes it the majority of our usage, but a smaller part of the revenue. Um, so is this more like a, is this a software platform for the venue too, like OpenTable, where they're going to have to input, like if they have open slots at their tables or this or that? We do have a back-end app that clubs can interface with that's used for some of the guest list and ticketing side. But for the most part, we either interface with an existing back-end platform connect, connecting through their APIs. But a lot of these 
players in the space, um, they're actually still running on pen and paper. There's a person handling the inventory management. That's actually a room, there's definitely opportunity in that space as well. And how do you track the table spend? Yeah, so clubs actually send us images of the receipt or they send it to us um, in a report. And clubs have been doing this for over a decade. So this is the incumbent way that they've been uh, tracking and paying their promoters. So we didn't change that, we've just been participating in that ecosystem. What's your uh, monthly burn? Yeah, so we're pretty lean. We're currently spending about $25,000 a month. We're actually profitable right now because we're... Okay, yeah. that's why I was asking, because you should be. Because, um, how do you deal with blacklists to keep people like me out of their clubs? Uh, <laughs> so the only people we currently blacklist are people who like no showed to reservations two times in a row without canceling. But for the most part, if people are paying, if they're buying tickets, uh, so they don't. Okay, because they're super large clubs, so it's not like you know a typical club where if I walk in, the place clears out and the company goes out of business. That's right. right okay. I mean, considering what's, what's, your strong transaction size, shouldn't paid paid uh, paid acquisition work really well for you? Shouldn't you be at a zero month recoup on your? So they're raising money. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, so we're currently raising money to invest in the product and technology. We found that having a great product that our customers love has been the most efficient way for us. So to what do you miss? What are you missing? Um, I think currently there's a lot we're doing on, again, the product side. We're rolling out a web app, which will help us with distribution, accessing people who don't want to download an app. But we're missing a large social component to the platform. We have the ability for customers to discover events, make transactions, get into the club, but nightlife is inherently a social activity. You yeah, but are they using you to be social or are they using you because, hey, I can get in. I'm going to Vegas. I'm going to download this app because I can get into SLS or They're XS. currently using us for the latter. So find discovering events, which is useful, and then getting into the clubs, which save them time and, and a lot of times money as well. But there, again, there's a huge social element to clubbing. You don't go by yourself. Um, you want to know where your friends are going. You want to know what's, what's hot. And again, we've been growing organically for the last most of our growth is organic, and whatever we can do to increase that viral coefficient of our app to spread it. Are, are you marketing it like to bachelorettes and bachelor parties? We and, try to. They're right. great customers, and that's why we see some of the seasonality in the summer because that's when all the weddings are, and that's when we try to. I mean, why, we definitely want to get it out there. Why does or doesn't a venue um, sign up with you? Um, well. In the beginning, it was tough just because a lot of these venues are super antiquated and they don't want to do more work. Club owners and operators are not the easiest or most intelligent people to talk to. Um, but Don't ever say that out loud to your customer. Yeah. On Especially now when your phone number is right there. On average, yeah. But now that we have these It was big, going so well. Yeah, it was going well. Now that we have all these great clients on board our platform, it's almost now that people are, are followers now because we got the biggest well, it, players. Well, isn't it mostly ownership groups like SBE and others that, that yes. really control most of those clubs? SBE is great. Yeah, they're actually the first people to say yes. And they have a large market share here in LA. They have venues in Vegas. Have you talked Miami. to them about investing? Um, currently actually talking to one of, their for, one of their former executives in this current round. So, yes. so how does this compare to table list? who yes. has already, I mean, it sounds similar, and they've raised a bunch of money. Yeah, so uh, I'd say Tableus and us were the two real players in the space. They're based out in Boston and New York. Where we're different is that they've kind of focused on the high-end market, so the, the, as their name implies, Tableist. Um, it is a very wealthy spot. We make about 75% of our net revenue from bottle service. But what's in a lot of ways core and key to our business is actually the lower barrier items, the tickets and the guest list that transact way more frequently but don't make us as much money. Um, you saw that chart with our organic growth. The secret behind that is really the guest list because you really open it up to people, you help them save money. Turns out that's what most people are interested in. And it's nice because once you acquire these customers and they use you for the low barrier item, they build trust with you. So we found in our behavioral funnel that over 40% of our table transactions first started from people who downloaded us and used us for guest lists. So it's great. pretty key for us. Yeah. Ian, Thank nice you. job. Thank you. That's, that's